I'm Linda Avey and I previously co-founded 23andMe, a personal genetics company, and I've moved on to co-founding a new company called Curious Incorporated. Mm, what is Curious Incorporated? Curious is an extension of a lot of the ideas I'd had at 23andMe, but it's focusing now more on all sorts of data beyond just genetics. So phenotypic information, which is all of the other stuff about human beings, um, what our environments are that we grew up in, the foods we eat, the weather we live in, the stressful conditions of our jobs, all of this information is really what makes us who we are. And so we're very interested and curious at being able to tap into that data and accumulate it and give people the opportunity to sort of play with it and, and look at it in ways that they hopefully will derive meaning. And does open science play into the workings of this organization? Absolutely. So um, if, you if you define open science as giving people access to their own information and letting them take it and run with it, um, and then share it however they choose to share it, it's really pretty much, we think, the opposite of how the traditional research model works, where you've got scientists, very obviously very talented people who have their model, and typically it's very much about having cases and controls and and clinical studies are always, um, or typically are, um, uh, where you've got placebo and you've got double blind and, and very, very well defined and kind of limited ways of doing research. And so we're interested in bringing consumers in, people who, from all walks of life who have all kinds of different things going on, working together and creating an environment that enables them to, to share information and then learn from each other and hopefully build a repository of information based on this sharing and collaborating. Excellent. And are there, do you have anything to say about any challenges of, uh, in particular, whether it's specific to your company and experience or, or just in the industry or in science in general, some of the challenges of open science? Well, I, I think there are, it's changing very rapidly. Initially, certainly when we first started 23andMe, we had a lot of uh, questions and I think a lot of doubt that the model could work where you've got individuals, especially coming online and doing self-reported um, communication of what was going on in their lives and I think we've proven pretty pretty handily that 23andMe is a very successful model for doing that. So now being able to extend beyond that model into something probably that will be considered even a little more radical of people deciding what they are interested in studying and having them kind of put on the white lab coat and be the one to say okay this is my idea and I want to pursue it. So we're very excited about to see how this evolves. Yeah, maybe you can tell me a little bit more about the way 23andMe use like uh, benefits from that, uh, that that filling out of the profile information. Yeah, it's it's so you know getting the genetic information as you know you just spit in a tube and then a couple of weeks later you get your data. That's kind of the easy part. The harder part then, especially on the research side of 23andMe, which we call 23andWe is how do you start to merge in now all this rich phenotypic information. And so 23andMe currently has been doing it through surveys that any individual who's a customer of 23andMe is able to fill out the survey, give that information in, and that merges with their genetic profile. And the combinations then on the back end give the 23andMe scientists the ability to look for these correlations and these genetic associations. And there have been now multiple publications that have come out and uh, I think it's pretty well established now that the model is working. It doesn't work for everything, but there are ways that we think it can work very effectively. Hmm. Is there something specific there that, like, where it does work or doesn't work? Um, well, you know, it's one thing to report that, yes, I have a disease or no, I don't have a disease, or to report in you know, my age of onset. There are a lot of things that people know very well and can bring that information in through a survey, whereas there might be test results or very specific pieces of information that might be part of their electronic medical record that they don't either have access to or um, just those types of specifics that may not be quite as accurate, you know, but then again we can test it and see where, you know, there's there's opportunity, I think, to see how far we can take this. Um, and finally, just uh, here in the conference the past couple of days, was there anything in particular that, uh, that you were looking forward to hearing about or anything that was a new idea that you were, that you found fascinating? Well, one of the talks that just went on about Eterna, which is this, uh, some, of, some of these games that are being created in uh, collaboration with people at Carnegie Mellon. I've met some of those people early on, and I just love the idea of citizen science, of crowdsourcing some of these very difficult problems in biochemistry that they're, they're showing they can do this. I, I just love this stuff. So it's great to, to hear their progress and how they're doing. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.